Last week, we got the surprise announcement of Torchlight 3, the continuation of the Torchlight franchise, a colorful hack-and-slash top-down ARPG where you run around leveling up a character, killing monsters, and collecting loot. You know, all the stuff you do in an ARPG. Now, what's really interesting about this announcement is it isn't a new game announcement. Rather, this is a revamp and rebranding of the existing Torchlight Frontiers. Frontiers, first announced in 2018 and set in the same universe, versus Torchlight 1 and 2 was going to play a lot like those games, but it had a few notable differences. First off, it was set to be an always online shared world game where you would constantly run into other players. It also featured a frontier mechanic per the game's name, which were these zones with their own unique power progression. So you would go into a zone, level up your character, get more skills and better gear. But once you moved into the next zone, your power would be reset, basically starting from level one again. And then finally, Finally, the game was also supposed to be a free-to-play game, which featured an in-game cash shop. Well, all of that has been scrapped, Torchlight Frontiers is now Torchlight 3, and will fall more in line with a traditional ARPG experience like the prior Torchlight games. Now, all of this information came through an announcement video, as well as a blog post that provided quite a bit of detail about the changes, the shift in direction, and everything that Torchlight 3 is going to be compared to what Torchlight Frontiers was. And that's what I want to talk about here in this video. What exactly is Torchlight 3? What's changing? What's staying the same? And what can you expect with this new game announcement. So yeah, this is gonna be a major shift in the design and the business model. They really want this to feel like a true successor to Torchlight 1 and 2. So instead of the frontiers, which was one of the big kind of main features of this game, there were these zones that had their own unique gear and power progression tied to them. Instead, now the game will follow a classic act structure like the previous Torchlight games. So players are gonna start in the Imperial Outpost and will progress through the zones following a story in a linear fashion, fighting harder enemies and getting more powerful gear in the process. Now to coincide with this, the horizontal frontier gear progression has been replaced now with a more traditional vertical power climb. So your character is going to level up as you play, you'll be getting better gear, and that gear will retain its power wherever you go. Although they did say there will still be some sort of scaling that takes place to keep combat in the earlier zones interesting, it's no longer going to be basically a full reset every time you go into a new frontier. They've also removed the forced shared world. Now zones will be private by default, although you can still meet other players in towns that are essentially going to act like social hubs, and there you'll be able to form parties and go out to play an adventure together in your own instanced version of the world. You can now also choose between online and offline game modes. When you make a brand new character, you're going to select which one you want. So offline characters, as it implies, will not require an internet connection, but they also then won't be able to participate in the multiplayer aspect of the game. If you want to play this game entirely offline, you're going to have the option to do so. They've said that all of the game's classes, the content, the features, the collectibles will be staying the same. Everything that's in the alpha will still be in the game. It's just, again, that they've kind of changed the structure. And beyond all of these changes, they've also added a new, better story, new bosses and monsters, and they've improved character leveling as well as the pacing as you move throughout the environment. And then finally, the game is no longer going to be free to play. It will be a premium title, so there'll be one a one-time purchase. You buy the box price, and you're going to own the full game. Now, whether or not this means you'll own future content, I don't know that they've talked about much, but everything that the game is when it launches, you'll get in that one original price. And to go along with this, they have removed the in-game real money store, so there will be no more microtransactions. Both in the video and in the blog post, they said that really the thing that pushed them to move in this direction was all of the community feedback that they got from the alpha. So those are some of the big changes that have happened and that we know that what Torchlight 3 is going to be compared to what Torchlight Frontiers was. They also talked a bit more about their plans going forward. So they said they will continue to develop the game with feedback from the community through the closed alpha and the upcoming beta. They do have plans of releasing 
getting more updates. In fact, update 10 just happened at the end of January. And with that, they added the changes to the act structure. They added a third frontier zone, a fourth playable class, and a bunch of other stuff. And the game is going to be launching on Steam for PC this year at some point in 2020 with a console release coming shortly after the PC release. So besides these changes, you know, you might ask, well, what's special about Torchlight 3? Like beyond the typical ARPG elements that we pretty much know what to expect, what does Torchlight 3 have to offer? Well, I think there's a couple of things worth noting. Uh, first off, this game's got some pretty unique looking classes. So, so far we know about the Dusk Mage. Rather than commanding elements like ice and fire, like most mages do in most games, uh, this one's focusing on the forces of darkness and light. Then there's the Forged character, which is this mechanical class that harnesses steam power to unleash massive explosions. The Railmaster, who builds tracks so that this train can follow it into combat, has also got this big old hammer and then just revealed was the sharpshooter, a nimble ranged weapon specialist that also uses magical trinkets. The game also has these items called relic weapons, which are these powerful items with limited use. It has pets to help in combat, carry your loot, and even sell items for you. And then player forts, where you go to upgrade your gear and unlock and level up new skills. And in fact, the look and the layout of the forts can be customized with things like monuments and pet stables. Torchlight 3, compared to what Torchlight Frontiers was is a clear shift in direction. They're making this a more traditional ARPG lining up pretty clearly with what the prior Torchlight games have been. It's it's going to be a vertical power progression rather than this horizontal progression with these frontiers where you reset your strength every time you step into a new frontier. It's now a premium title. They're, they've removed the free to play, but to go along with that, they've also removed the in-game cash shop, which I assume most people will be happy about. This whole thing is rather interesting to me. The, the fact that they're making some pretty significant changes and even renaming the game. Pretty crazy. Now, I would say that most of the time, big changes so close to release are cause for concern. Again, we do know that this game's coming out this year on PC through Steam, and they're making some pretty significant changes. And most of the time, I would say we should be worried about that. I mean, it wasn't too long ago where we saw all those changes with New World, where they shifted this game from a sandbox, open world, PvP-focused game to more emphasis on PvP. PvE with optional PvP, but with a toggle system. And a lot of people voiced a lot of uh, concern about that. And I think it's fairly reasonable. You got a game that's been developed for years, and then shortly prior to launch, they say, hey, this game is changing completely. And in Torchlight's case, they're changing it so much, they're renaming the game. It's pretty crazy. But I would say in this particular case, I think it's actually a good thing. So first off, it's quite clear that the player base wants this. I mean, you take a look at that announcement video, the like to dislike ratio, is insane. People were over overwhelmingly happy with this announcement and this reveal. And it wasn't all that exciting of a trailer. You know, it was a guy sitting down and saying, hey, we've changed Torchlight Frontiers. It's now Torchlight 3. It wasn't like this big action-packed Torchlight 3 announcement cinematic trailer trying to hype everybody up. It was just a dude talking with the number of views and the, the like to dislike ratio and just scrolling through the comments. It's pretty plain to see that the people who are interested in this game are very, very happy with the changes that have been announced. I think it's also worth noting, and one key element here, is that with these changes, they're not stripping away any of the content. I guess beyond the fact that they're removing the cash shop and the forced open shared world, everything else is staying the same, it's just restructured. Acts are being restructured, the character and gear progression is being restructured, and the online requirements are no longer a requirement. They're basically shifting it to move away from, I guess, the kind of new things that they were trying and moving back towards, hey, ARPGs, prior Torchlight games is what we're going to do going forward. Now, in some sense, I will say I'm kind of sad that we're not going to see them take a crack at trying something new with the ARPG genre and the Torchlight franchise specifically. The idea of these unique frontiers that had scaling gear for each of the different zones and, and you could get really strong in one frontier, but then it'd be like starting over when you move into a new one. I think it's kind of it was kind of a neat idea and the shared open world I, I kind of enjoyed as well. But as they 
they say, if it ain't broke, don't go trying to fix it. And maybe that's just exactly the case here. And again, I don't think there's going to be any argument with the removal of the in-game cash shop. Although the fact that they're moving to a premium one-time purchase model will probably prevent some people from trying the game. I would say by and large, people prefer just to get the whole game with a purchase rather than being free to play and having to buy all these microtransactions along the way. I'm a little bit disappointed that I won't get to check out the Frontier version of this game and kind of what they were trying to do with these different locations that had kind of their own power progression tied directly to them. I do think it was a neat idea, but obviously for the most part, the people who tried it didn't really like it because it's an overwhelmingly positive response. Oh, and just to piggyback off of that, I want to reiterate, I didn't get a chance to jump in and check out Torchlight Frontiers. And for that reason, most of the footage in this video is taken from other YouTube videos. I, I try to avoid doing this. Typically, I try to get as much clean official released footage from the game developers themselves, but there wasn't really a lot of that out there without their faces plastered in the corner. So I, I got some footage from videos of both The Hive Leader and Fever, actually both YouTubers that I think are great and you should check out. And if you want to learn more about Torchlight Frontiers and kind of what that's going to mean for Torchlight 3, I highly recommend checking the videos that I got most of this footage from, and I'll put the, the link to both of those in the description below. And with that, there you go. Torchlight 3 is now a thing. Torchlight Frontiers, it's dead and gone. But not really, because it's the same game. It's just, it's different. It's the same. It's, it is so, it's still so weird to me that they're renaming it to Torchlight 3. But I guess, you know what? If they're not even going to be any major structural changes, they might as well call it a, uh, a successor to the original two games. Probably going to get them a lot more attention, frankly. So, uh, good move on, on for, to the marketing department, because this is clearly going to work for them. <laughs>